Good day, physics champion. Today we will take a lot for this paper. I mean, October, November 19, uh, paper 2, variant 1, for that code. You know, there is no difference between this code 625 and 972 for uh, IGCSE. And um, we will go through this paper together. No need to read the uh, cover page. We read it before in many uh, classes before. And um, also we will go through the examiner report to see where was exactly the difficulties that faced the students during this paper. So let's get in. In this paper, as you see here, in the first question, uh, first of all, uh, let's say something like, you know, the um, gravity acceleration could, see, could be considered thin all over the paper, unless if they ask you to do something different. In question one, since so measures the diameter of a pencil, which measuring instrument will give the most precise reading. The most accurate, precise reading for a diameter for such bodies like a pencil, it could be measuring tape, it's, it's not that much fine for that because the measuring tape is going to give you the circumference, then you need to go through some calculations to find the diameter. Um, meter rule, it's the same, it's very difficult to measure the meter using meter rule, but we have a micrometer screw gauge or a ruler. Actually, there is no big difference between ruler and meter rule here, so I will go to the uh, third option, which is a micrometer screw gauge, because I can close it or open it to find exactly uh, uh, what is the diameter directly. That was the first question. So I'll go to option C. In question two, a light object is a light object is dropped from rest. You know the word light here; it gives me an impression that there is something related to um, the air resistance. Because if it was light, so it could be most affected by air resistance. So I'm going to say here, drop from rest. It falls along this uh, distance vertically through air. How can the motion of the object be described. Initially, the acceleration is constant. Then, after some times, the acceleration gets decreased. Then, after some times, the acceleration becomes zero. This is what I can say. So, a constant acceleration, once it's light and there is air resistance, so we cannot consider this as a correct option. Uh, increasing acceleration, it's impossible because the maximum acceleration is 9.81, or we could consider it's 10. So also, I will not go through that option. Uh, uh, increasing acceleration and then moving at uh, terminal velocity, uh, sorry, this decreasing acceleration and then moving at constant or terminal velocity, that was correct. So the acceleration will gradually decrease from 8.1, uh, sorry, 9.81 or 10 up to zero, then it could, the, the velocity becomes constant. In question three, a car travels at an average speed of 60 km per hour for 15 minutes. So how far does the car travel in 15 minutes? You know, in 15 minutes, uh, uh, you have the time and you have the speed, so you could find the distance. And I, I could write that in you know, the distance equal to uh, velocity times time. So the velocity here is 60 per second times the time here. You cannot write 15 because 15 in minutes. So in this case, what we call it's um, mixing measuring units, it cannot work. But I know, you know 15 minutes means 0 0.25 hour or quarter hour. So I'm going to say 60, 60 times 0 0.25. And depending on that, the uh, uh, answer will be uh, B. Actually, you know, we, we, we did that because 60 here, it's a kilometer per hour times 0 0.25. This is hour, I mean quarter hour, so this edge will cancel this edge, and we still have only the displacement. That's why we choose B. In question four, which quantity is a force due to gravitational field? Which quantity is a force due to gravitational field? Let's take a look. Like density, density, it's not a force. Actually, density here, it is the ratio between the mass over volume. 
the mass here it's not a force this is the amount of material inside any body it's measured by kilograms the weight here it is a force weight is force force is weight this is fact weight is just a specific type of force is done by the gravity so here this is force so i'm going to choose c uh, the volume it is just the 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 area times height or three dimensions uh, amount in space the density of air is 1.2 kilogram per meter cube a room has dimensions like 5 times 4 times 3 we have l w h this is it, it could allow you to find the volume what is the mass of the air in the room you know once when i have the volume of the room it means this is the same volume for the air inside the same room so i can write here density equal mass over volume so the mass itself could be density times volume the density has been given 1.2 times the volume it should be the three dimensions times each other to find the volume you know the volume of, uh, uh, of any uh, cube like that it could be five times four times three so it could be five times four times three so here we have the volume and that was the density by the way this is the symbol for density so density times volume it gives you the mass and also for the same measuring unit we could consider the answer here is d because this calculation is going to give you 72 so the answer will be d remember in the measuring unit for density it has been given in the question which is kilogram per meter cube and the density for the volume it could be five meter times four meter times three meter it means the measuring unit here meter cube so this meter will cancel this meter i still have 75 kilograms and this is what we just choose in question five uh, sorry in question six a car is traveling around a circular track at a constant speed as shown in which direction is the result force on the car or resultant force acting on the car you know for any rotating object let's take a closer look here for the figure for any rotating object like that position uh, here we have no force unless if you consider the force of the engine pushing the car forward and here we have no effective force actually this if you see these t, two, two areas here uh, they are equal because we can consider this is the friction acting back right but actually for any rotating object there is a force try to keep the body rotate in the same circular track this force usually directed to the center of the body so i'm going to go to option b to show you the answer right keep in mind you know there is no other force acting in any rotating object especially if it was in a constant speed remember they wrote here constant speed because it's not constant velocity because the change in the direction usually happen between moment, moment and another like in that location the direction is in that direction in that position the direction has been changed in that direction the direction has been changed and so on so we have many different directions and all of them have the same magnitude of uh, 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 speed but they have different when it comes to velocity they have different directions so we cannot consider that this is constant velocity so here we have a constant speed and we have variable directions so the only force is the force which try to change this direction and uh, it could be the centripetal force or the force acting to the center so i'm going to go to option b here for for uh question seven two forces b and q act on meter rule as shown the meter rule is pivoted at one end the rules start to rotate in clockwise direction you know clockwise direction it means it's going to rotate in this direction uh, around the pivot this is what it seems clockwise direction for me so which statement is correct i can say that p equal to q impossible because the distance to the pivot is uh, uh, different so i will not go to option a p is less than q if p is less than q you know this is also it doesn't make sense with me because if p is less 
times least distance, so impossible for Q to have a bigger value and a bigger volume and it make this equilibrium. So it doesn't make sense with B. So B also is wrong. P times A, this is the moment clockwise, is equal to Q times B. This is the this is not a moment, a moment because, because you know, P here, it's not a distance to the pivot. So this is also wrong. So I will go to option D, that this is what we still have. And the moment clockwise is bigger than the moment anticlockwise. And this is what we have in D. In question 8, which statement gives a complete description for any object that is in equilibrium? There are no forces acting. Yes, I'm agree with that. Uh, there is no resultant force acting. But you know, no forces here, it doesn't make sense because you know, if we have two forces acting in an object and the total resultant force equals zero, this is because F1 is equal to F2 and they are opposite. That in, in opposite direction, it means the concept is correct. The total force is zero, but there is some forces acting. So I will not go to option A. B, there is no resultant force. Yeah, this is, this is it seems correct for me. You know, there is no resultant force. But also, it's, it's not that much correct because this is... Um, concept, but we still need to add something about the turning force, the turning effect. Right? So this part is correct, but this part is missing. So I will not consider B correct because it's, uh, there is something important missing. Uh, see, there is no resultant force and no resultant turning force acting on it. Actually, it seems for me, you know, this is the correct answer because the two conditions are available. No resultant force, this is condition number one, and no turning force, this is condition number two for any equilibrium case. So I will choose C for D. There is no resultant turning force. Actually, it's the same like B here. The second condition is available, but the first condition is not available. That's why I will not choose B or D. Uh, so the right answer, depending on that, is going to be C. In question 9, two objects, X and Y, move directly towards each other. The objects have the same mass. So both of them have the same mass. Object X has a velocity of 5 meter per second. To the right, object Y uh, has a velocity of 3 meter per second to the left. Object X and object Y collide and stick together. So once when they move together, it means they have double of mass when they are moving. If the mass was M for both of them, after collisions, they were going to move with uh, uh, 2M. So the question is, what is their velocity after colliding? You know, we have a condition which is, please write that down, the moment, I mean, with this letter B, I mean before collisions, should equal the moment after collision. If that was correct, it means, I'm going to say M, this is the mass of X, times the velocity of that, which is 5. Then I'm going to add the moment for the other body, which is Y, the mass of Y. It's the same mass like X, so I'm going to give it a concept like M times 3. Remember, you know, that 3 should be negative because it's in the opposite direction. Otherwise, your problem will be wrong. Equal to, when they move, they're going to move together with the same velocity, but the mass will be doubled. So here I have 2m and the velocity, which is unknown for me. This is the equation that we need to go. It seems for myself, I'm going to take m here as a common factor. Then I, I still have 5 minus 3 equal to 2mv. So this m will cancel this m, and I still have v equal to 5 minus 3 divided by 2, going to give you 2 divided by 2, which is 1 meter per second. 
So I will go this one meter per second, but the direction here, these two answers available twice. Please take a closer look. This one, when we calculate it, its sign is positive. And uh, this three, the sign here is negative. So the one meter per second, it will be in the opposite direction uh, again is three. So it's supposed to be to the right. So I will go to option B here to be in an opposite direction uh, uh, um, to the right, not to the left, because I consider the left direction negative as we see in the first equation. I hope it's understood. So the right answer here, it could be question B. No, sorry, answer B. In question 10, pricks are used to slow down a moving car into which form of energy is most of the kinetic energy converted as the car slows down. Let's see, chemical, there is no chemical reactions here. I couldn't feel that, so this is nothing. Elastic, no, there is no elasticity here at all. Thermal, yes, because of the friction, gonna increase the friction between the tires and the uh, uh, brakes and even between the tires and the ground. So thermal energy here most probably uh, the uh, most product. Sound, it's not that much comparing by the previous. So I will choose C here for question 10. In question 11, a man carries 20 tiles from the ground to the roof of a house. Each tile has a mass of 1.2 kilograms. The roof of the house is 15 meters above the ground. How much work done or does the man do against the gravity on the tiles in carrying them to the roof? You know, for any work, I'm going to say work equal force times displacement. The force here is going to be like, remember, no, we have 1.2 for each tile, and they are in total 20, and by the end of the story, it gives you the mass. So it's going to be 20, this is the number of tiles, uh, times 1.2, this is the mass of each one. Now we have the total mass. This is, should be times gravity acceleration, which is 10. So this 10 here is the gravity acceleration to find the force. Still times the displacement. The displacement here was 15 meter. So if you use your, your calculator to figure out what is the answer here? You found the answer as me. It's 3.6 kilojoule, or you can write it's 3,600 joules. So the answer here, depending on that, is going to be D. In question 12, a car is moving along a straight horizontal route. The car has 1.5 megajoule of kinetic energy. The car, the car accelerates for 20 seconds until the kinetic energy of the car decreases to 2.5 megajoule. So what is the minimum average power developed by the car uh, engine for this acceleration? So they ask about the power. And you know power means energy divided by uh, time. And I have two energies and I have time. So I'm going to write here the power in average equal to change in energy divided by time. So the change in energy here was 1.6, 2.5 minus 1.6. Remember, in the measuring unit here, it's in megajoule divided by the time, which is 20. So in my calculator, the answer will be Four, five, three zeros. So I'm going to write here it's four, five. Then we have approximately uh, 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 three zeros over here. So this is in what? So I'm going to change it to be compatible with the answers that we have here in C. So it's 45 kilojoule, kilowatt instead of three zeros. Right? So if you take a closer look for the calculation that we just have done here is... 2.5 minus 1.6 is going to give you 0 0.9 mega. Mega means times 10 power 6. Divided by 20, 
If you do that in your calculator, the answer will be exactly 45 kilowatt. This is what we just did. In question 13, drawing pen. Uh, uh, Thumbtack has a sharp point at one end and a flat surface at the other end. The pen is pushed into a wooden board. How do the pressure and the force at the sharp point compare with the pressure and the force on the flat surface? You know, I'm pushing with the same source of force, so I have no doubt you know, the force here could be constant in both these two cases. But the idea about the pressure, because the pressure is inversely proportional with the area. So I will go for higher pressure for the smaller area. So depending on that, I'm going to choose for question 13, I will choose C. Because it seems uh, the same as the flat surface. This is for the force. The force is constant in both. But actually the pressure at the sharp point, it's supposed to be greater. That was easy. So the common correct answer here for C. That was 13. In question 14, an object is 20 centimeter below the surface of a liquid. The density of the liquid is 1,200 kilogram per, per meter cube. What is the pressure at the object due to the liquid? Due to the liquid only. So I'm going to say simply pressure equal rho GH. Rho is the density, which is 1, 2, 0, 0, times G is 10, times the height here it's supposed to be in meter. Because, you know, G here has been given in meter, meter per second square. So even the density here, it's related to uh, meter cube. So the height also is supposed to be in meter. So I'm going to change 20 centimeter into meter by dividing them over 100. Or I'm going to say here 10, 20 times 10 power negative 2. If you write that in your calculator, you will figure out that the answer is uh, 2.4 kilopascal. I'm going to write that 2.4 kilopascal. And, or, or you can write it like 2, 4, 2 zeros pascal. So I'm going to go to option B. That was 15, uh, 14. In, in question 15, which statement about the evaporation of liquid is correct? Okay, let's see, because uh, in such these questions, many students, they got confused. Like the uh, least energetic molecules escape from the surface, and the temperature of the liquid decreases. Actually, the least here is wrong. It should be the most energetic molecules, so I will not go to option A. The least energetic molecules escape from the surface. Again, still the same mistake, so I will not go to option B. See, the most energetic molecules escape from the surface up to this uh, uh, line is fine, and the temperature of the liquid decreases, yes. So uh, I have no doubt, and C is the right one. Let's discuss D. The most energetic molecules escape from the surface, and the temperature of the liquid increases. Actually, there is no source to increase the temperature of the remaining liquids. So I will not go again to option D. So the only right answer here is C. In question 16, a bubble of gas is formed deep and under water. The bubble has a volume of 40 centimeter cube, and the pressure inside the bubble is uh, P. The bubble rises up through the water. The volume of the uh, bubble increases to 56 centimeter cube after it was 40. And the pressure becomes one th sorry, 100 kilopascal. The temperature of the gas does not change. So what is the initial pressure? You know, this we just need to apply one law, which is P1, V1, equal P2, V2. I will not mention the temperature in the law here, because they said, you know, the temperature is constant. So that T could cancel this T. If you do this calculation, it means in the P initially, which is P1, equal P2 times V2 divided by the initial volume. So depending on that, I'm going to say, like, the initial, the final pressure was 100 kilopascal 
times, I'll keep it in kilo, Pascal, times the volume. The volume was like, finally, it becomes 56, divided by the initial volume, which was 40. So depending on that calculation, if you carry out that in your calculator, you will reach to that answer, which is 140. So when I say 140 here, and uh, there is a missing kilo in my problem, like this one in kilo pascal. So I'm going to write here kilo pascal. So the answer will be D. Depending on that, the answer will be D. That was question 16. In question 17, which change in the design of a liquid in-gas thermometer makes it more sensitive? To increase the sensitivity, we have two options. The first one is use much narrow capillary tube or big amount of liquid in the bubble. So depending on that, I'm going to choose A directly. That was easy. But longer tube here, it could increase the range, not the sensitivity. Smaller liquid uh, reservoir, actually, this is not correct. Because if it was smaller, it means the volume uh, uh, expansion will be less so it will uh, decrease the sensitivity. It's going to do the opposite. Wider tube, it means the volume uh, height or the liquid height will be less than as usual. So it will be very difficult to observe any change or any small change in temperature. So all of them wrong except A. In question 18, a liquid turns into a gas. This occur only at one particular temperature. And the change happens throughout the liquid, what is this process called? To be honest, particular temperature change, throw over the liquid and it's going to be changed into gas. This is directly vaporization or boiling. It's not condensation because condensation here from gas to liquid, it's the opposite. Evaporation, this is also from liquid to gas, but actually it happens at any temperature not in a particular temperature, so this is wrong. Fusion, this is from solid to liquid, this is away. So that was the answer. So I, I will go to option A. In question 19, one end of a root of Kaba is placed in hot water, or in hot water. Thermal energy travels along the root to make the other end warmer. Fine. What is the behavior of the Kaba at an atomic level that accounts for most for the transfer of thermal energy from one end to the other. The kinetic energy will be transferred from molecule to the next, and the free electrons will transfer and cool light from atom to, uh, to another. So let me check which one of them will be com compatible. Atoms at the hot end gain kinetic energy, I agree with that, and move towards the other. No, there is no movement. Atom at the hot end expands. No, there is no expansion for atoms. The expansion happens only for the entire material. Free electrons at the hot end gain energy and move towards the other end, colliding with atoms along the road. This is, I have no doubt, this is the correct option. For, for D, free electrons at the hot end gain energy from the hot water and move directly to the other end. No, there is no movement. Free electrons at the hot end gain energy from the hot water and move directly to the other end. No, there is some collisions could happen. And uh, actually, this is, this is not completed sentence, so I will not go to option D. Uh, uh, question 19, uh, I will go to option C. Uh, the last question for today is, in question 20, a surface is made so that it is a good source of infrared radiation. Which surface is not swearable? Actually, the swearable one is the black one. Because the black color, it's a good absorber and good emitter for infrared radiations. So I will go far away from the black color. Let's see the answers. A server that is painted mud black, so this is not the answer because of that knot here, be careful. A surface that is painted white, I agree with that initially. A server that is heated to a high temperature, no, it does not. 
maybe high temperature, then it's going to be cool uh, very, very, very fast. So this is not a good radiator. A server that is a large service area. Uh, no, this is not the, uh, the concept that we couldn't compare the materials. Actually, the service that is painted white, it could be very, very bad to be suitable for good source of infrared radiations because white is a bad absorber and bad uh, uh, emitter. This is the idea of uh, question 20. So I'm going to go to option B. Thank you for listening. And now I think it will be very, very helpful to check some of these videos here, right here. I'm going to give you more information about mini papers and past papers, especially for IGCC. Thank you. Have a nice day.